outdoor equipment. Rockies looking to make it five and one. That'll be the battery this evening. John Gray and Dustin Garneau. The bullpen has been terrific thus far. For more on what they've been up to, we go field level. Mark Scott, Ryan Spielborgs, guys. All right, Drew, the bullpen's about to head yeah, down to the bullpen, pass. which is a uh, perfect timing. I think I've used the words bullpen and versatility about 100 times already this season, spilling. But these guys can pitch all over at the back end. I want to give you some numbers. I want to have my stats straight for Ryan. Carlos Estevez, 6th and 7th. Ober, 5th and 8th innings. Adam Adovino, 7th and 8th. Dunn, 7th and 8th. McGee, 6th and ninth. Holland, of course, is at the back. I had to pump the brakes a couple times because I'm looking at the numbers. They've only given up three runs in 17 and the third. But then you look at it at the historically bad last season. 19 less runs in 20 innings last year. That's incredible. So let's give credit where credit is due. I love the fact that the Rockies have been able to be versatile. You have to tip your cap to Bud Black. That is something he brought over from his days at the Padres and his ability to let the guys know what their role is. We're also looking at guys like Carlos Estevez and Scott Ober, guys that really took their lumps the last couple years. And now I'm really extremely proud for them because they're battling back and they're a part of a very versatile bullpen that has to be versatile when you're looking at games at Coors Field. If they can protect leads and get the ball, the ERA is not always going to be the same, but at least they'll stay in the ball game. And another word we've been using is unit. They really believe they are a unit top to bottom. They are a unit, and that's what we are as a broadcaster, too. Let's go back up to Drew, part of the unit. That was interesting. Nice job, fellas. The bullpen has been terrific. What a matchup tonight. It is John Gray. It is the guy named Kershaw. Rockies and Dodgers come on back to Coors Field with us. Kershaw is from a different era. To say that he has overmatched the league during his big league career would be a profound understatement. He is the current standard bearer for pitching greatness. John Gray aspires to enter that. An examination of the numbers suggests producing. Numbers suggest Clayton Kershaw is from a different era. To say that he has overmatched the league during his big league career would be a profound understatement. He is the current standard bearer for pitching greatness. John Gray aspires to enter that stratosphere, and the arsenal he possesses gives that dream credibility. An upper 90s fastball and an assortment of whiff-inducing off-speed pitches keep hitters uneasy. Each day that he takes the mound, he moves closer to ascending to that elite level. The lead dog and the aspirant, Kershaw Gray, next.
Game two between the Rockies and Dodgers is presented by Echo Outdoor Equipment. And what a beautiful night we have for Saturday of the season. John Gray making his way to the Coors Field mound. It is perfect for baseball as the Rockies and Dodgers meet in the middle game of this three game set. The Rockies coming off a terrific two to one victory yesterday. Andrew Tolles, he's going to lead things off for the Dodgers this evening. So far this year, a couple of hits and 11 at bats for Tolles. And here's the rest of the Southwest batting order for Dave Roberts. Corey Seager came into the ball game in the latter third, will bat second. Justin Turner third, and then the veteran Adrian Gonzalez, who always has hit the Rockies hard. Jock Peterson will bat fifth. Yasmani Grandal, a switch hitting catcher. Yasiel Puig seven. Chase Utley will bat eighth and play second base. And Clayton Kershaw on the mound. Tried to load up with left-handed bats next uh, naturally against John Gray. Second appearance in 2017 for John. 40th career start for John. That's a, this will be the seventh time, or excuse me, eighth time that he's faced the Dodgers. The previous seven, two and three with the 411. We talked about his numbers here at Coors Field. The good number though is he's working on 11 scoreless innings shutout innings against the Dodgers here at Coors Field. Fastball slider, curveball, changeup. And the slider is going to be of utmost importance tonight for John. Really couldn't command it at all. So they started to work maybe just to tighten it up. So he's going to grip the slider just a skosh harder today. And hopefully they'll get a little bit more bite. But with all the left-handers in the lineup, he's going to need it if he wants to navigate into the sixth or seventh inning against them. There's Gerardo Parra. He's going to start in left field, and that's normal. He does a lot of uh, his work in left field. Steven Cardulo is going to get another start. He moves from left, where he started yesterday, to right field. Cargo is going to sit the initial part of this game out. He saw the rest of the starters for the Rockies. And again, it's Dustin Garneau behind the plate. He's swinging the bat well, but also against Kershaw. You want to load up as the Dodgers did with left-handed hitters. You want to load up with the Rockies with right-handed hitters. Here's the breaking ball. That was a curveball. It's one ball, one strike. What a matchup we have tonight. Two guys that know how to throw a hard fastball and they have breaking pitches to match. Well, you want early success for John coming off that rough fifth inning in Milwaukee. And you also worry with a young pitcher about him being too amped up. Yesterday we worried about Kyle Freeland for obvious reasons, but today he's going against Kershaw, and he knows that. But in reality, he's just got to set down each hitter that he faces in the Dodger lineup. He can't well, control what Kershaw does. No, and you think back to that start in Milwaukee, he retired only two of the five leadoff men in that ball game. So that was a key for John that just never was really working ahead. The other number we've touched on in, in previous, you know, last year especially, and even in the, the first broadcast for John is the, the first couple innings for him. Always trying to find some rhythm and timing. 684 ERA in the first two innings. Good start. There yeah, you good go. Good start. He fell behind 3-1, and one, and he gets weak contact. So he gets tolls, and that'll bring up Corey Seager. This is fascinating. Look at this. Clayton Kershaw's first 39 starts, John Gray's first 39 starts. You're talking about the best pitcher on the planet who became the best pitcher relatively quickly. Quality starts, Gray won more. Lower whip, John Gray. More strikeouts per nine inning, John Gray. You would, And then if you look at the ERA, obviously it's a run lower for Kershaw, but he pitches at Dodger Stadium while Gray has been pitching at 20th and Blake. It's shocking. You you could make a convincing case that Gray's numbers are slightly better than and the great Clayton <laughs> Kershaw through their first 39 starts. And I think it shows you how hard it is, even for the great ones, to give, gather their footing at the major league level. Now, obviously, Clayton has had the success throughout his whole career, and that's what you hope for John, too, that he can match it where Clayton has 127 victories and only 60 losses. But through the first 40, yeah, you look at those last three that you mentioned, and the nod goes to John. That's a strike one and two. Spilly, when you saw those numbers, did that uh, shock you? Of course it shocked me. You look at these numbers because I don't think he ever put John Gray in the same category as Clayton Kershaw quite yet. 
And then when you start looking at the numbers and you think to yourself, well, last year, John Gray put up the, some of the best strikeout numbers we've ever seen as a Rockies record. And you look at what he's done in the history of rookies, you're thinking to yourself, you know what? I can start putting John Gray in this conversation. The biggest caveat for John Gray and Clayton Kershaw, Kershaw added an extra pitch two years into the major leagues, and that was a slider. So we'll pay attention to John Gray as he's been developing his secondary pitches as well. Here's the 2-2, and this is a low fastball handled by DJ 2X. You know what's interesting about Seager? He had faced Gray 10 times. He had five hits against him, including a home run prior to that at bat. The five times that he made out, they were all strikeouts. Well, he put the ball in place, so I guess that's a better for him on this one. But two ground balls for John. I think that is a little bit of a telling sign here early. And here's Justin Turner. Turner hitting 471 in the opening week of the season. He's like the right-handed version of Anthony Rizzo, how close he stands to the plate. Just notice where the, this foot's going to be, oh, change it there. It's going to be right back on the line. Slowly hit up the middle. Story's got it with time and a very fine start. Three ground balls. Not hit particularly hard against John Gray. We'll see the Rockies on offense when we come back against Kershaw. We go to the bottom of the first. Clayton Kershaw, who was dominant against the San Diego Padres on opening day at Dodger Stadium, has the baseball, as you're well aware. And Charlie Blackman will give him his first challenge. Here's the batting order presented by Southwest Airlines for Buddy Black. DJ LeMay, who will bat second. Cargo not in the starting lineup, as we mentioned, so Nolan Arenado will slide to the three spot. Then it's Story, Mark Reynolds, Gerardo Parra. The only lefty other than uh, Blackman, Stephen Cardulo will bat seventh, Dustin Garneau, and John Gray. Well, where do you begin with uh, Clayton Kershaw? How about the career record, 127 and 60? Well, I'll go one better. I'll go the career ERA at 236, which is the lowest of any pitcher who's played exclusively in the live ball era, which begins, you know, basically in 1920 and on. So... You know, pick a number, and everything's going to be glowing for Clayton Kershaw. Fastball, slider. Cur to me, now you just have to pick fastball or slider. I don't think he, if you look for the curveball, he'll, he'll mix it in. But it's just hope you hit the fastball to start with because you don't want to get to the slider, especially with two strikes, as Charlie is right now because the batting average with the slider on a two-strike count Zero nine four. Ew. Yeah, ooze right, Spilly. Charlie's in a ditch, 0 and 2. Kershaw just doesn't walk people. He's in and around the zone all the time. That's a fair ball. Kershaw pounces on it. He's always been a good fielder. And he gets it to Adrian Gonzalez just in time, one out. 
Here's Los Angeles defensively. It is an outfield of Andrew Tolles, Jock Peterson, and Yasiel Puig. Turner was a finalist for a gold glove at third. He wasn't going to win it, and he knew that. I think we knew who was going to win that. Corey Seager at shortstop, one of the biggest shortstops I've ever seen. 6'5", and about 225, 230 pounds. Chase Utley at second, Adrian Gonzalez, who has a great glove still at first base, and Yasmani Grandal, good pitch framer. LeMahieu off to a tough start. He's hitting just 105. Back to first three in the Rockies lineup, typically. Blackman, DJ, and Cargo off to uh, slow starts. Cargo's gotten some hits, but Charlie at 105 coming in, DJ at 105 coming in, and, that, and I keep coming back to the great news, fellas. The Rockies are 4-1, and one and they haven't hit, and you know they're going to. Top three in the lineup. If Cargo is in there, they're 8 for 58, and, and then DJ's 2 for 19. Charlie, after that ground outs, 2 for 20 now. That's I think that's the least of your concerns of what's going to happen at the top of the lineup. But to your point, Drew, when you're sitting 4-1 and one and those guys haven't really done anything yet, it speaks volumes of where they could go. Two balls and a strike is that swing pitch, the 1-1 one and one pitch. Swings in favor of DJ LeMahieu. The only month last year, Spilly, that he didn't hit 300 was April. He hit 291. Aprils can be slow for some guys, it, especially weather. You can look at weather. At times you hear pitchers are ahead of the hitters. The timing isn't quite there yet. I think for DJ, even with the long spring training, watching his swing from the side, the, the timing isn't quite as tight as he'd probably like it. We've seen a lot of pitches where you don't see DJ chase too often, especially up in the zone. I don't, I don't mind him swinging down in the zone, especially off a of Clayton, uh, Clayton Kershaw curveball or slider. But it's up in the zone because that's not the pitch that DJ usually hunts, and that just shows me his timing is off. Two and two with one out. And now he works it full. Kershaw, amazingly, last year had a strikeout to walk ratio of more than 15 to 1. I've never heard of anything like that. He only had 11 walks last year. Come on. You couldn't even do that in a video game. And he gets a strikeout of LeMahieu on a fastball at 91. Two outs. For Clayton. Could do it a variety of pitches and even the fastball out of the hand and the Subaru Supermo, you know, right down the middle. But he even has deceptive movement when it's in the zone. But Clayton Kershaw last year, you compare him to the Cy Young Award winners, Rick Porcello in the American League, Max Scherzer in the National League. 11 walks, that is not a misprint, 172 strikeouts. So he was over 15 to 1, where the other guys are a little over 5 to 1. And that's still great. 5 to 1. 5 to 1 is terrific. One strike count on Nolan. He has a five game hitting streak to begin the season. Only two other players in the National League have hit in the first five for their respective teams. Outside, 1 and 1. He's had success against Kershaw. 303 lifetime batting average. You'd take that in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. Two and one. That's a good eye on the Subaru strike zone with that third pitch. Not many guys could take that one. Two and two. Nolan does own a home run against Kershaw. Guy who has the most home runs against Kershaw is Cargo. Cargo has a couple of home runs against him, 36 at bats. Two of his seven hits. Even after all these innings that he's thrown for Clayton. Over 1,700 innings, 1,767 and two thirds to be exact. Still can rear back and get 95. I read some advice he gave to kids. He said, hey, don't worry about a curveball until after high school. If anything, just practice long toss and build arm strength. 
coming from Cy Kershaw. This ball's driven to deep center field, way back. Take a good look. You won't see it for long. One nothing Colorado. That ball was tattooed. And the hardest thing to do is hit a curveball out to dead center field. I mean, you hit fastballs out there, but Spilly, you know you have to have precise mechanics to be able to hit a ball like Nolan just did over the 415-foot sign out in center field you often will pull a curveball. You don't take a curveball and drive it to dead center field. I'm with you, Huey. To be able to hit a ball like that, you have to be right on time. Let's go back to the Subaru Supermo and take another look at this gorgeous swing. The over the top, 12 to six, and wow. Head down, see how he moves that back foot to help generate some power? A lot of times we talk about trying to, you know, stay there and pivot off it. No, he says, I don't need that. I can stay through it coming off that foot. That was a transfer of weight. Yes, it was. I mean, that's about as much transfer as you're going to see. Because sometimes we'll see Nolan where he'll drop down a little bit more on the backside. But that one, he kind of waited, waited, and then exploded. You know who used to unweight is Tulowitzki, Spilly off that backside. Yeah, very similar with how they would slide their hips forward to get through the baseball. Big hack, no baseball from Story. It's one and two. That was career home run number 113 for Nolan Arenado, who's just too shy of joining the all-time top 10 list for the Colorado Rockies already. Crowd a buzz after that blast. Here's the one, two. Two and two. And he stayed off the curveball. Nice job by Story identifying it, and it's three and two. This is even unusual, the fact that in the first four hitters, we've seen two three-two counts. And 21 pitches for Clayton. You have to jump on them early. You have to jump on an ace early until they get settled down. That ball rocketed foul. Listen, Kershaw's vulnerable here. I mean, I know he's, I know the last, they haven't beaten him since 2015. I understand that. The guy's great. It's phenomenal. However, he does have a 460 ERA at Coors Field. So the Rockies have nicked him at times. Considering his ERA in his career at Dodger Stadium is under two. This ball on the ground is short. Seeger's got it, and he throws out his counterpart. But the Rockies get a run on the blast to dead central by Nolan Arenado. one nothing Rockies through one inning.
Sports is brought to you by the 2017 Toyota Tundra and your hometown Toyota stores. And by Southwest Airlines, yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. You gotta like the start for the Rockies just after they uh, put the lines down. One, two, three inning for John Gray. And then with two outs, Nolan Arenado hit one out to center field against Clayton Kershaw on a curveball. Here's Adrian Gonzalez. Fastball just missed off the outer edge, according to Gabe Morales, the home plate umpire. Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, is at first. Eric Cooper at second. And Adrian Johnson is at third. Seems to be ageless, Adrian Gonzalez. This is 13th, 14th year in the league. It just doesn't seem like anything's different for him. This is a bouncer that's a little tougher because of where DJ was, and he gets the great hands at first. What a scoop by Mark Reynolds. There's so many great things about this play. I'm going to start with the positioning of DJ, how he's a rover like he would be in softball in short right field. So he's going to have to travel all this way right over here to make this play. And not only does he do that, he circles it. Gets a throw off, but then Mark with the pick. And that's an in-between hop, too. It's not the easiest pick for a first baseman because you're not expecting it to be able to set in your glove, but Mark was able to snag it. One and oh on Jock Peterson. That's a fabulous play. Rockies move Story slightly to the right side. They've been shifting. Huey, but not quite as much as last year, at least in the early going. Not not the extreme shifts that we saw, where if this was Jock last year, Trevor would probably be three or four more steps. Nolan would be more over towards shortstop. I think some of it has to do with your pitcher and what he's throwing, too. You know, if you're going to pitch, pitch him away, and that's how you play him. Line shot right at the perfectly situated Nolan Arenado two outs fans once again this season join in on the conversation we invite you each and every night send us your comments photos perhaps questions on Twitter or Instagram and include the hashtag Toyota talk and we'll get to as many comments as we can each evening here's Grandal Well, so far, John Gray with three ground ball outs. I think it's going to be extremely important, especially tonight. It's 74 degrees. That's not typical April weather, and it's starting to, to howl. The wind is starting to pick up. And as we saw with the ball that Nolan hit to center field, I think there's a little help behind it. So if you keep the ball out of the air, you should be fine. Two and zero on Grandal. Three and zero on Grandal. Grandal zero for three last night. He had a big September at Coors Field. He had two games in which he hit multiple home runs. He had one game at Coors Field where he hit one from the right side and the left side. He did that against the Padres a few days ago. His 27 home runs led all catchers in baseball. 3-1 chop foul. About this night in April. April 8th, we get this beautiful, beautiful evening. It is gorgeous, man. It is perfect. 3-2, and he missed with a slider. First base runner for the Dodgers. Now that'll bring up Puig. Puig was 0 for 3 in a walk in yesterday's 2 to 1 victory for the Rockies. A 
cleanup yesterday. Tonight, seventh. He's hit eighth. He's <laughs> kind of hit all over already for Dave Roberts. Bounce toward the middle. DJ's there. He's going to go the long way, and he's not going to get Puig. Story was getting to the bag. He didn't have a fast runner. Was that not available, Huey? I, I think it was. I think if he goes back and looks at this, he's going to think I should have gone to second base. I want to see where Trevor went first, if he went after the ball. He went after the baseball. No, that's what it was. was and, then, it. and then DJ thought he probably couldn't get him as Grandal was going back. And Puig just by an eyelash beats it out on the Subaru Supermo. Yeah, so just looking at that replay with Trevor, thinking he might go get the ball. It's one of those in-between ones. I think that was probably the, the option that once DJ recognized that to go to first. So Chase Utley at the plate. Utley two for 17 lifetime against John Gray. Utley brought back by the Dodgers. I believe it was after they had already signed Logan Forsythe to add to their bench. And he had a good spring. He hit over 300 this spring with a couple of home runs. One and one. Well, even when he's not starting, he provides that left handed veteran presence for an opposing manager to have to worry about. I don't think he's the everyday player that he once was. But platooning or playing two or three times a week, I think will suit him just fine. One and two, at least 38. Got to the big leagues with Philadelphia for the first time in 2003. A six time All-Star. Gray needs to make one more pitch here. Lifted to left out of play. I know when Dave Roberts was receiving his Manager of the Year award this offseason, it was still prior to Chase Utley signing back with the Dodgers. And when asked at this award ceremony, who is one of the greatest teammates he's ever had or players he's ever coached, without a doubt, he said Chase Utley. Best teammate that any player could ever ask for and the easiest guy he's ever had to coach. Pretty stoic guy, though, Spilly. That goes through Garneau, and now you got two in scoring position. Two and two. Well, this just went through the five hole of Dustin Garneau on the slider. Well, it hit right to the side of the plate. Dustin just didn't drop down fast enough. Two two and on the ground at DJ. No problem. Two left to board. We will go to the bottom of the second. The Rockies in front on the Nolan Arenado home run. One nothing.
counseling his ace pitcher John Gray. Folks, when the Rockies score seven or more runs, make your way to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between four and six to get your Rockies Taco Special. Lift Moss at Taco Bell. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, Ryan Spielborg's Mark Stout. Mark Reynolds. He has bat in his hand. He's at home plate getting ready to face Clayton Kershaw. Five, six, and seven for the Rockies in the second. Gerardo Parra, Steven Cardulo, and hopefully others. Reynolds hitting 389 the opening week of the season. I think with Clayton Kershaw, you got to be ready to fire real early in the count, don't you, Huey? Yeah, you have to hunt that first fastball because it, if you say, well, I'm going to take one, I'm going to look at it, I'm going to do all this, and I'm going to measure them up. Next thing you know, you're 0-2, and now you, you, you're you just hoping and, and really just a, a winging a prayer. We were talking to Charlie Blackman before the game. Charlie said that obviously he's got great stuff. But he doesn't beat you like so many pitches, getting you to chase out of the zone. He beats you in the zone, and because there's strike three. Because he's so herky-jerky and, and unconventional, he's very deceptive. You don't know when to start your timing with Clayton because he brings the hands up, the herky-jerky motion, the li extra little leg kick, and then he spots and darts the fastball in the Subaru Supermo. And, you know, Charlie was talking about his stuff in the zone. That's why he doesn't walk, guys. He doesn't need to nibble. He doesn't have to have you chase. Gerardo Parra, I say this with all due respect to Gerardo, it's just that left on left, you expect it's going to be a nightmare. He's he's performed well against him, 10 for 30, 333 average against Kershaw. Well, and I think that's what helps too when you make the determination that Cargo's not going to play because Cargo in his career is 194 against Clayton in 39 games. On the ground to Utley. Two outs. I made the argument a year ago about trying to have more lefties face Clayton Kershaw and somebody thought I was mad and I said no I'm not mad it's just you take away a pitch for Clayton Kershaw if you load up with left-handed hitters, and that pitch is the slider. To a right-hander, Clayton Kershaw will throw a slider, which is called a, it's a back foot slider. So it looks like a fastball, but it's a slider to the back foot of the right-handed hitter. To a lefty, that's a ball outside. Cardulo, good swing. Fouls it into the upper deck. You know who used to give Kershaw fits? Chris Iannetta. And it didn't matter if it was here or Dodger Stadium. Chris wore him out. Spilly, you had some success against Clayton early, I know at least. Uh, but he's he's not easy to face. I'm sitting here because of him. <laughs> this is this is the timeout box, you know, that Clayton Ker Kershaw put me in. Yeah, but I had early success you did, early. Right? Yeah, when he was only fastball curveball, I had two homers against him. Which is wow, good. that's great. That, that's really good. But then he, he got the back foot slider, and then I'm sitting here. Look out. You know what? We, we looked up earlier, Spilly, because the Rockies have not beaten Kershaw since 2013. 11 straight starts, 10-0 at 224 ERA, including two complete games and one of the great performances you'll ever see, the no-hitter at Dodger Stadium. Um, but you didn't help the cause in 2013, did you? No, I wasn't on the team. And oh. actually, the last time that Clayton Kershaw was beat at Coors Field was 2011. And I certainly was on that team. I just didn't do anything to help the team win that game. Who was the uh, big star? Who, was, uh, who, who do we uh, pat on the back? You pat Troy Tulowitzki with a solo shot and Chris Iannetta with a solo shot. There you go. Yours truly had three strikeouts. 2-2, two, two, and that's on the ground to Seager. And it's a 1-2-3 inning in the second for Kershaw. To the third we go. Rockies leading on an Arenado home run.
John Gray. I saw the strangest analogy in spring training that Steve Foster used to describe the progress of John Gray. He was talking about a Chinese bamboo shoot, and he said the Chinese bamboo shoot grows two centimeters each year its first four years. But in the fifth year, if it's watered right and has the right sunlight, it can grow as tall as 85 feet. So I confirmed that again with Steve Foster, and he said, that's what I'm thinking about John Gray. He's in his fifth year. He grew a little, grew a little, grew a little, grew a little more last year. Maybe this year, that big growth. That's his analogy. He says he'll come up with a better one this year. But I don't know if he can, guys. That's a good one. So the bamboo shoot yeah. under in the proper environment right. can grow up to 85 feet in the first year. In the fifth, fifth year. year. Oh, the fifth year. It's two centimeters the first four, and then it takes off. I think bamboo can grow in any environment. That's what makes bamboo so great and amazing, right? Like, it doesn't matter where S it can Spilly grow. Spilly would know that. Yeah, we had it in our backyard. I couldn't get rid of it. Well, in the fifth year, it, it becomes... Uh, Too tall. It becomes our neighbor's it problem. Obliter <laughs> it, 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 it obliterates <laughs> the view of your neighbors. Kershaw leading it off in the third, 9-1-2. and two. And Kershaw with a base hit through the left side. Second hit for the Dodgers. Probably not the prettiest of swings from Clayton. A little inside out slice. And it positions it perfectly in that 5-6 hole. Oh, he's just, a, just an athlete. Out of the Park Hill area in Dallas. Matthew Stafford, also the same high school. I think Kershaw was part of the offensive line for, for Matthew Stafford, if I remember correctly. They're good buddies. Stafford didn't quite have the same control on the hill. He had a big arm. Kershaw, first round pick. Out of high school. Grew up in the shadows of SMU. One one on tolls. Two and one on tolls. Spraying his fastball a little bit. It's three and one. It's Corey Seeger. He'll be next. Nice adjustment from John there. I think the previous couple pitches, he'd started to run away from his arm a little bit, meaning he was opening up and starting to fall off a little too hard towards first base. And that one was more directional towards the, pl towards the plate. I mean, John has a natural tendency to, to spin and fall towards first, but that one was a little bit more under control. Payoff pitch, gets a ground ball, could be two. There's one on the first, got him, double play. He this said it so many times last year. Mark Reynolds is a much better first baseman than even the Rockies thought they were getting. And he understands where to go with the baseball. This is twice now in two days where he's had a ball at him, where he had the option of going back to the bag, but he had already committed and turned his body to make the throw to Trevor. So watch how he's already catching the ball in the Subaru Supermo. Maybe he threw it a little bit more outside than he wanted to, but then got back to the bag and completed the double play. The other thing I liked about that, and we, I don't know if we'll have a shot, we'll look for it, but John Gray, after that play was turned, kind of gave a little fist pump for it. Yep. I like that opening pitch to Seeger. 
Spilly, it was a slider down and in because Seeger is a notorious first pitch swinger. I think any time in the major leagues you need to take your shots. I, I've always been proponent of swinging early. I think it's it's better. The the math supports it. Swinging 0-0 is, is a fantastic count. If you like 0-0, it's like swinging 2-1. And I think Seeger understands that. O2 is not a fun count. Spike that breaking ball. One and two. And we do have it. Watch John Gray's reaction to this double play. Yeah. That didn't get you pumped up playing behind him. I'm not sure what does. It's a big double play after the base hit. Get, get that. Now John's feeling it too. Another slider underneath the hands. Against Seeger. You and I were watching Seeger and take batting practice today, and you're thinking back on your career. Tallest shortstops you ever played with. Well, Cal, Cal was big, right? Cal was the, the biggest one, you know, that I played with. 6 4. Yeah. In the air, left field, Para retreating, and he makes the catch. Whoa, that thing started to carry. Way to stay with it, Gerardo Para. Turns into a 1 2 3 inning. That almost got over Gerardo's head. Middle of three, Rockies up 1 0. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Subaru Love. It's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. By Lodge Casino, your first choice for fun. And by Echo Outdoor Power Equipment. It's my ninth birthday. Hit it here. Happy birthday, buddy. Hey, you know what? He's out in center field. That's almost where Nolan hit it. I tried to get you a baseball. Dustin Garneau. Who hit a home run yesterday that provided the Rockies with the two to one lead and ultimately the two to one victory. Garneau hit 500 in the early going this year. He's hitting six straight against the Dodgers, seven for 18 against LA. Here's the home run. He almost had to do a Carlton Fisk. Kind of wave it, wave it, and then wait for the sound off the foul pole. I was joking with Dustin today around the batting cage about, you know, hitting the home run. He goes, that was my first year at Coors Field. Because I was talking about more just an opening day home run for him and how exciting. And he goes, yeah, all my other home runs have been on the road. It's like, there you go. Learn something new every day. He's done a nice job. He started oh, his yeah. third straight game behind the plate. He started the day game, game four in Milwaukee, and then against the two lefties. 
He's been in there, Ryu last night, and of course Kershaw tonight. Here's the one-two. That's the third strikeout for Kershaw, and that'll bring up Gray. Good luck to the DU Pioneers in tonight's Frozen Four National Championship game. Go get it. And we're scoreless after one period of play. It's DU and Minnesota Duluth. Two schools with a lot of hockey tradition. And that'd be great if the Pios could capture another one, huh? They blew well, out Notre Dame. Yeah, and then Will Butcher just won the Hobie Baker Award. So you got the top defenseman, former draft pick of the Avalanche. One in the top honor in college hockey. Ball and a strike on Gray. He's got to return the favor. Kershaw got a hit off Gray. John took a bump guard <laughs> swing he, there, Spilly. He wanted a home run. I was talking to some Dodger people, and they were saying that tonight's game, not to make light of it, but it's, it is April 7th, but it's a statement game. This is a potential for the Rockies. He's going to take strike three. This is potential for the Rockies to beat Clayton Kershaw and maybe switch the whole narrative of National League West is going to have to come through Colorado. Well, fans, RBI Baseball 2017 returns with fast pace MLB action with all your favorite MLB teams, players, ballparks, and more. Get RBI Baseball today for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and mobile devices. Learn more at rbigame.com. Well, you want to make an early statement. There's no question about it. This is Blackman fouling it off. Two outs, nobody on. But here's the deal. The other thing you hear from the Dodgers, and we heard the same thing from people in Milwaukee, said, wow, you have a really good baseball team there. Well, and then they started to see it at the end of last year, too, with the, with the team. And, you know, I, I think the one thing I heard in Milwaukee and today was, wow, some of your young arms. Because you look at this rotation for the Rockies, the average age is 25 years and 81 days. That's the youngest in all of baseball for a rotation. Slightly younger than the Oakland A's rotation. Good eye from Chuck Nasty, two and one. Tyler Chatwood, Carlos Gonzalez. As always with any team, it's just confidence. At some point, and we say this about the teams that end up making it to the playoffs and, and win world, world Series, and every time they win a World Series, it's always the same statement. We played for each other. We believed in each other. It took more than 25 guys. You build confidence by beating guys like Clayton Kershaw when you have everybody throughout the lineup, throughout the bullpen, as we've seen the Rockies do in the first five games. So they're starting to build that confidence. This would be a huge feather in the cap. Take down Clayton and the Dodgers tonight. 2-2. Two -two. It's out of play. Saw the shot of Tyler Chatwood. He's the old man of the staff. <laughs> At 27, he and Chad Bettis are 27. Cargo making him laugh again. See Tony Probably. Walters cracking up. So a full count on Charlie. He had a ground ball to first. In the bottom of the first. The wind is really starting to pick up down at the field level. Winds blowing are, out to right. It is blowing out everywhere. That ball's down the line, extra bases for Charlie. This is a really long run for Puig. He was way over in right center field. This will be a triple. Well, they were really 
they shift it over into the off gap and primarily Puig in right field. And so when this ball was, I mean, look at, because he's almost in a direct line with second base, so he knows that if anything's pulled, that it's going to just be go over there and chase it down, wait till it stops running or, or stops rolling, and Charlie's just running the whole way. First triple of the year for Charlie, but I think once Clayton spiked that curveball, that he, threw, he only threw it about 50 feet. Charlie knew that on 3 2 that he was going to get a fastball, got it inside, and turned the hands on it. So here's LeMayhew. And it's bounced right at Turner. So we move to hitting number four, the Rockies one, and the Dodgers nothing. High speed challenge question. I like this one. What has been the most important factor in the Rockies' 4 and 1 start? Four choices the pen, the starters, Arnauto Parra Reynolds, Buddy Black. Four good choices. Go to at root sports underscore RM to cast your vote. We will tally them up. We promise you. We will not reveal the answers. We'll have the correct envelope. <laughs> at the conclusion of the ball game and into the post game show. <laughs> La La Land. <laughs> Come on up. La oh, La La wait, no, hold on. No. Sorry. Sorry. It's, my bad. it's bullpen. <laughs> Warren Beatty will be a special guest, by the way, on the Rockies post game show with Jenny and <laughs> Corey. 0-1 oh, on Justin Turner. He had a ground ball to short his first time. Fastballs away. Yeah, I ball talk, one strike. Yeah, I talked about his first at bat, how, how close Justin stands to the plate, right on the line. And you can see it from this angle. There's right foot, so only about six inches away. But he really does something, you know, kind of unusual. You, so you can see the mark right there where he stands. But how he kind of just dives towards the pitcher a little bit, Billy. You don't see it too often. I think of a, a former teammate of mine in Brad Hopp, very, very similar. They'd stand right on top of the plate. And really for them, it's they keep their hands loose. They get the leg kick. The leg kick's all timing. And you hear me talk about being elastic. As you see that leg go down and then stretch out, the back foot will slide. And you can just see the, the final part of the swing is the bat just flying through the zone. I will say this, even though he does go towards the pitcher, his head doesn't move a whole lot. It, it'll drift forward, but it's not a whole lot of up and down. And that's why he recognizes pitches. Yeah. It's working for yeah, him, that's for sure. He's one of the good ones in the game right now. There used to be a drill that hitters would do and it was something that I used to do to help with my leg kick and it was to take a medicine ball 
and throw it as hard as you can against the wall, and you, you typically get in your stance. Well, as you start to do it more and more often, you realize that if you can get the back foot to slide, if you can get the hip to rotate, you can throw the medicine ball a lot harder, and essentially that's what Justin Turner's swing is. Swung on and missed. That, believe it or not, is the first strikeout of the night for John Gray. He had seven through four innings in Milwaukee, but he's been just as effective getting weak contact. And the Subaru Supermo up underneath the hands. It's but Justin Turner really, watch the right elbow, how he had to bring it close to his, his belly to try to get the barrel to it, and he wasn't able to because of the extra mustard on the fastball. Here is Adrian Gonzalez, and a slider dropped in there for a strike. DJ's playing that rover spot again. He's about 10 yards onto the outfield grass. Playing that far, and DJ will take ground balls out in that area, just like a lot of these guys in the shift. It's not just take balls at second or short. They move to these positions, and during batting practice, they'll have the coaches, Stu Cole, Tony Diaz, all the way, Vinny Casilla, they'll have them hit the balls there, and they'll work on taking balls just off the grass. So it's not foreign when it comes into the game. One, two, weak contact. Reynolds will need a little help, and he'll get it from Gray. Two gone. Two gone, and that'll bring up Jock Peterson. Jock's a guy that's played with his stance and his hand placement a little <laughs> bit through his first. Uh, I think he. Few years in the big leagues. Go through four or five stances, at least I can think of. With Jock, it was one the the bat was still straight up in the air. Another time it was laid flat, kind of like Rod Carew. Another time Mickey Tettleton, where he had his feet together, probably didn't eat the Fruit Loops like Mickey did back in the day. But his feet were together, and I think he's finally found a, a stance and a approach that works for him. He does not get cheated on swings. His first year in L.A. was 2014. He had just 18 games played, 28 at fast. But in 2015, he had 26 home runs. Most of those were in the first half when he was an all-star. But by the end of the year, I mean, it was a whole lot of whiffing going on. He hit just 210 for the season. Last year, he moved it up to 246. He went. He had 25 home runs last year. He cut the strikeouts down by 40 from 170 to 130. Well, early on this year, they're back up again. Six strikeouts and 13 at bats. I do know some people that have worked with Jock over the years in trying to just trim up the swing. And they said in the batting cage, he can trim the swing down. They're trying to get him to use less effort. But as soon as he comes in the game, he can't help himself. Two strike count. Turner Ward, the hitting coach for the Dodgers. Turner played a little bit with Atlanta. Oh, that was late. Yeah, I, I always think, in fairness, I do think I, that's a tough call for the home plate umpire because when you hear somebody yell time, your inclination is to grant it. Right. And, and it, it, it's hard to process that, where the pitcher is. Just hope that when the pitcher stops, he doesn't get hurt because that's what you're always fearful of. Two and two. You know, Buddy Black doesn't like it, and I get it. John Gray didn't like it. And, and you're taught by pitching coaches, guys like Buddy Black, go ahead and throw the pitch. Even when they but go ahead. Know, but when the time's called, what's your natural reaction? Not to throw it. Yeah, the, the actual reaction <laughs> is to stop. 2-2 two, two on Peterson. 97 fouls. It's like off. it's like with a box called and you're at the plate. You, it's a free swing. You can go ahead and swing, but you hear the box, you don't. Although we did see it yesterday. I think what was it Tolls who swung on the box that was called. 
Yes. No, no, no I take that back. Oh, it was tolls. I think yep. you're right. I yeah, think it, it was, was tolls. It was a pinch hit. Yep. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. Top of four, Rockies up one nothing. Gray thought he punched him out. And it was close oh. on the Subaru strike zone. By about a quarter of the baseball. If you go right I in that think same go, spot, he's going to fire. He will. He'll fire or it'll be called a strike three. Well, he went there again, but that was low. And after being ahead two strikes on Peterson, a uh, disappointing walk for John Gray, and that'll bring up Grandal. Second walk allowed by Big John. Grandal was the other man he walked. Two hits allowed. Puig, an infield hit, and Kershaw, ground ball through the left side. is not giving that pitch. Darno is receiving it well. He's presenting it well. You're right. He's just not giving that pitch. And John Gray's been locating that pitch well. That's outside. Garneau, after four straight misses, arm side will go out. And if you look at the Subaru oh, strike right. zone, Gabe Morales is, is on top of it. Those pitches just off the plate. It's turned into a 20 pitch inning, and the next pitch will be number 67. Not, not alarmingly high at all at four innings, as long as he can put this hitter down pretty quickly. Quig, hopefully next inning. He missed in the same spot, six straight pitches. And you're just creating your own issues. Buddy Black asking Gabe Morales where those pitches are. Foster will go to the mound. They pitched one, three, and four were almost identical on the Subaru strike zone. And they're just slightly off the plate. You don't want, Spilly, that trend to continue, and I'm not talking about walking guys, that's obvious. But he's throwing on just one side of the plate right now to, to Grandal and to Jock Peterson, two left-handed hitters. He never came in. Now you want to... John's been talking about mixing sequences, and that also counts for working both sides of the play with the fastball. The problem is, is those fastballs are extremely well located. We're talking about a quarter of an inch here, the difference between a ball and a strike. You tip your cap to Morales for sticking st tough with that strike zone, but uh, I'm with you. Sometimes you do have to mix it up. It's just those are good quality pitches. He's not getting the strikes called. All of a sudden, he can't buy a strike. That's too high on Puig. Maybe you'd like to see a slider here, though, because he's throwing six, seven straight fastballs, and then just worry about the timing with with Puig if he catches up to one of those fastballs. Oh, 
Like that, stay up for Para, it will. Great catch, Gerardo Para. He keeps the Rockies in front. Beautiful play by a guy who's always been an outstanding defender. One nothing, Colorado. Rockies up one nothing. Another full, of, maybe a sellout tonight. Hey, the first 20,000 fans through the gates tomorrow will receive a Colorado Rockies hooded Henley. I, and I know Tony Walters has it. He's modeling it. But I think there's somebody else that might be modeling it too. Oh, look at you. You're looking very dapper down there in that too, right? Yeah. yeah. Hooded Henley. You, you look like you should be on the prices right, Spilly. I was trying to do my best Van of White. <laughs> I don't know. You, you, have, you, have, you have failed. That, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jack, Jack Sajak? Uh, That's, that, that would be Pat, Pat Sajak. Uh, but you're close. You're, you know, right in the neighborhood. Nolan Arenado is at the plate. He had a home run to center field on a curveball his first time up. That's the difference in this ball game. Bottom of the fourth with Vanna White and Jeff Hughes and I'm Drew Goodman. <laughs> he looked good in that Henley, though. I actually called this Henley... Ramirez. Oh. And I named, I named my Henley. Or Clay Hensley, if you remember uh, the same. Yeah. No. yeah. All right, I'll keep Try to do keep work. Keep working, man. <laughs> See you guys. Keep, the, keep those gears going. Oh, to be a fly on the wall inside Huey's, or inside Spilly's noggin. Well, yeah, please. Don't yeah, put sorry, my noggin in his yeah. with, with his. Just bounce off the wall. <laughs> <Bing. Boing>, ding. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot in here. <laughs> Turner's got it, one out. Rockies have two hits, the Arenado home run, and then a triple with two outs last inning by Blackman on a bullet down the right field line. A quick update in the hockey for the DU Pioneers. They're up 2 nothing now. Terrific. Trevor Story, he had a ground ball to short. Batting cleanup tonight. He's been batting fifth every other game. Last year he had three appearances in the four spot. And he responded. He was 6 of 13 with a couple of home runs. You know, Trevor Story ended up with 27 home runs, which led all shortstops, despite only playing through the end of July. Corey Seager would end up being the unanimous rookie of the year, third in the MVP voting. He finished with 26 home runs. 
That's the 17th time the Dodgers have had a rookie of the year. Of course, we know who the first one was. Jackie, Jackie Robinson, Robinson in 47. And, and, and then they had to run, what was it, five in a row, but the last was Todd Hollinsworth. It had been a while for the Dodgers. 2 0 on Story. This ball ripped to left. This will run to the corner. It'll be at least two for Story. He'll stop at second with a one out double. Got himself in a hitter's count, Huey. Well, and that's the key for anybody, but especially against Clayton Kershaw. Third double this season. He gets the fastball from Clayton. And the key is he doesn't miss it. I mean, so many times we talk about, hey, you got your pitch and you just fouled it back. Well, he didn't. He ripped it down into the corner. You know, Clayton's reaction, he knows. He's just hoping that that hook's foul. There's no way that was fair by 20 feet. Mark Reynolds caught looking on a fastball in the outer third his first time. See if the Rockies can grab another run here. Product of the University of Virginia. Defending national champs. One and one. No, two years oh, ago. That's right. Coastal Carolina close, last year. The Chanticleers last year. Of course. How could we leave out the Chanticleers? It was that West Coast school in the uh, College World Series last year also. The Gauchos. Of course, the Gauchos. This ball hit hard and hung up now Ow, in story. Oh, no, Hopefully no, no. didn't get hurt. Oh my goodness. I think he twisted awkwardly and that looked like a groin. No, no, no. He thought this ball was getting through, so he takes off and then puts on the brakes. There he's okay, but right here, right there. Oh, I don't know if that was a groin, a knee, an ankle. It's walking a little better right now. like we got to get a shot if he's walking downstairs that would be down the stairs and up the stairs to the clubhouse yeah and he did just walk down well sometimes Keith Duggar will take a guy just straight down those stairs and try to stretch a guy out of it or at least give him an examination right there so hopefully not all the way up into the clubhouse but definitely really? cause for concern can you see down there Adamas uh, Amarisa getting loose I'm sure the natural reaction of a bench player is to get loose once you see a player walk off with the head trainer. Take us through that base running because the Rockies have run into a couple outs here in the first few days of this season. You want to be aggressive, but hard in front of you. You got to you got to put the brakes and on, I, don't you? Yeah, you do. And I think what uh, the other thing that happened is you have to check to see in this new day and age of shifts and all that where guys are positioned before the ball is even delivered because Corey Seager was already over in the hole. So you have to make sure that that ball gets through. It's the, the old rule of thumb. You can't run into the out with the ball in front of you. So see how far over Seeger is? And right now, Trevor, you have to know where he is before that ball's hit. And then once he slips, right here, so many things could have gone wrong. The, the right groin, the left knee, the, le the left ankle, the right ankle. Well, 
That's a good sign. He's back in the dugout talking to Buddy Black. Well, sometimes, too, when you do that, your body, it, it scares you momentarily. And then you have a chance to, to settle down and, and make sure all the parts are okay. You say, okay, I'm good. This ball is a base hit to center field. So Parra continues to swing it well against Clayton Kershaw. Two on and two outs for Cardulo. Now you go back to that play, and you know who knows what the pitch sequence would have been. I get all of that, but you'd rather have the guy at second base and take your chances. Instead, you ran you ran into that out. What you honestly hope for Trevor is that it was a little ankle roll. You. That is easier to overcome, especially if it's a minor one, than if you start messing with muscle pulls. Right. Because then you start trying to protect it. At least with an anchor roll, it, it hurts, and then it's okay, but you can tape it up. Steven Cardulo looking for his first knock of the early season. Now would be a wonderful time for it. Cardula in the Milwaukee series, a couple of walks and was hit by a pitch, so no official at bats. Yesterday he was 0 for 3. He had a tremendous spring to make the team as a non roster invitee. He was taken off the 40 man in the winter. Sixty fifth pitch for Kershaw. Spilly, you're down there pretty close. It, it, it looks like Story's staying in, just watching how he moves, he's moving around, and after the conversation. Is that uh, what? You are surmising. I'm trying to see. I mean, it seems like he's going out. It's also Ian Desmond has checked in with him, making sure that he doesn't go out there and put himself in more harm's way. Christian Adamas has his glove. Line shot, gloved by Turner. Well, the Rockies barreled up three in the inning. Actually, four because Reynolds hit that ball hard, but they do not score. It remains one nothing. It's a good story, obviously. Trevor Story back at shortstop after he came out after that base running. Hey, I got to get in today's Coors Light Cold Hard Facts because the Dodgers are in town. And it's to this day in baseball history. Where were you on this day in 1974 when Hank Aaron hit home run number 715 off of Al Downing over Bill Buckner's head, 400 feet into the left field bullpen where Tom House caught it and then brought it to home to Hammer and Hank when he passed 
Babe Ruth, 55,775 at Atlanta Stadium. That was a Monday night televised game. Spilly, I don't think you can play where were you on that date. I know that Drew and Huey can. <laughs> I was in Jersey, Little Leaguer, and I watched that game because everybody loved Hank there. Chase Utley's at the plate. I'm trying to remember exactly where I watched that. I was at home in oh. Sedona, Arizona. Yeah, I was, I was 10 years old at home in uh, New York. One of the great, great moments, not only in baseball history, and even beyond sports history, really one of the great and memorable moments in, you know, as crazy as it sounds, in, in U.S. history because, you know, Babe Ruth was the most famous sports figure beyond the first half century of the first, uh, of the 20th century. When you think about the, the death threats that he was getting and all the, and, and the, the right. racial... The, the fr from the racial aspect, absolutely. Can we talk That's about one of those treats uh, when we go down to Atlanta, being able to to see to Hammer see. Henry uh, still, who's yeah. been an executive for many many years with Atlanta, and you know next week we'll get to celebrate, which is always wonderful, celebrate the legacy of Jackie Robinson, Huey, and what. Henry Aaron, if you haven't read, you should. What he endured during his pursuit of 715. I mean, d the same courage that, that Jackie Robinson uh, had, or similar courage when Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier back in 1947. And a guy who I feel as great as Hank Aaron was a player, has never fully gotten his deal. Is it possible to be <laughs> underrated if you're Henry Aaron? But I think it's some sort of Henry, Henry Aaron stole bases. Yeah. He had over 3,000 3, hits if you take away his I home know. runs, 755. Crazy. Yeah. And here's something else. Both, both he and Willie Mays, two of the absolute best who've ever played, top five on anybody's list, both from uh, Mobile, Alabama, right? Yes. Willie May, 660 career home runs. And very similar in size. 5'11", maybe 6 foot, 180 pounds. Not not these behemoths, 6'5", <laughs> 245, who could move buildings. Two and 0 on Kershaw. Well, coming back from Milwaukee, we were just at the landing spot of his final home run for Hank Aaron. 755 hit at County Stadium, which was the old ballpark for the Milwaukee Braves. That's a strike. And, and what they did, what Spilly's referencing, Spilly, it's out in the parking lot, it's right? It's out in the parking lot There's outside of Miller Park. Yep, it's a plaque in the parking lot surrounded by some brick. Uh, that home run was July 20th, 1976. Cardulo coming quickly, makes the catch. Think about some of the outfield plays today. You've had two by Gerardo Parra, and now one from Steven Cardulo in right field. It's his first major league start in right field at three innings there in his major league career. A couple starts and left, but he's not afraid to make a dive out there. The slide on the Subaru Supermo, look it all the way in. And then make sure you hold that wrist tight. Two outs, Andrew Tolls at the plate, ball one. Spilly, what is the most difficult catch when you leave your feet? Left, right, back, or forward? I think anytime you leave your feet, it's a difficult catch. I think for that swing, particularly against a pitcher, uh oh. This ball's well hit. Para is not going to get there. Nobody's going to get there. Andrew Tolls has tied it at one with an opposite field home run. Last home run for Tolls toward the end of August, a grand slam in the ninth inning to beat the Rockies. And Adam Adovino, 10 to eight. 
and it was at about the same spot because it was an opposite field home run that night. Well, what a mediocre, uh, a great rise from Andrew Tolls because he started in A ball last year. And boy, did he transfer some weight there and then take it out opposite field over the 390 sign. said earlier any ball in the air because of the wind the wind is really starting to pick up it, it says on my iPad that it's getting close to 17 to 20 mile an hour gust and even though Nolan squared this baseball up to center field had a little extra help that ball that tolls hit had a little extra help yeah you were hoping it just went off the wall give him a double and work on the next hitter which John Gray's trying to do now. Corey Seeger in a 1 1 game, and he's behind 2 0. Thought that was a good visit by Garneau, trying to settle Gray down, who had to be tremendously disappointed. Check him. Nope. And a ground ball to second. That'll end the inning. Andrew Tolls got one up in the uh, wind gusts, and he took it out to left center field to tie it at one as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. On a pretty, pretty night in the Mile High City. The Rockies won and the Dodgers won. The home run by Tolls. The first run that John Gray has allowed at Coors Field against the Dodgers in more than 15 innings. Clayton Kershaw. In the fifth, we'll see Garneau, Gray, and then Charlie Blackman. Rockies have four hits, but they've hit for the cycle. Single, double, triple, home run. Home run by Arenado. The next hit was a triple by Blackman. The next hit we saw was a double by Story. And then last inning, a single by Parra. The only clean inning Clayton had was the second. Strikeout, a couple ground outs. As far as at least having a runner out there, something 
something happening. Ball and a strike. This year, the Rockies will play the Dodgers only 18 times. Usually it's 19 inside your division. The Rockies have captured the season series only five times in 24 years against L.A. The last time was in 2013. They won the season series that year 10 games to nine. Dave Roberts and Buddy Black, they were together in San Diego in 2013. Two and two on Garneau. Can read Dave's lips. It just missed with the fastball. Yep, that ball was out. What the managers rely on on pitches east and west is looking at their catcher and their catcher yeah. if they give them a glance as if to say that you know that was a strike that's when you'll really hear the dugout start barking because it it's very difficult to tell well if, from their angle because they're they're where the coaches are and the managers are they're about the same level as the as the catcher so they they can't see east and west they can see north and south. They can tell by a hitter's reaction where that ball was, but you can't you can't see the play. You can't tell in or out, especially where the catcher sets up. He might set up, you know, inside off the plate by three or four inches and catch it there, but it's still a ball. Or as we saw an inning ago with John Gray, the pitch was was off the plate. Arno battling away. And hey, let's see if he goes to a breaking pitch here, because sometimes you'll see a pitcher when he, he starts his windup and then steps off, he didn't have a breaking pitch grip, whether it's even a curveball or a slider. Well, you were right. It was a curveball, and it was, by his standards, a very poor one, three and two. Barely gets onto the Subaru strike zone page. You could tell it was bad. Been a good at bat for Garneau. He's trying to finish it. Instead, it's strikeout number five for Kershaw. Well, first 10,000 fans through the gates for the Rockies against the San Diego Padres this Monday, April 10th. We'll receive a coupon for a Hebrew National Dollar Hot Dog. Big crowd again tonight. Looks like well over 40,000. Shoot, looking around, this thing might maybe be above 45,000. Yeah, close to a sellout. Sell out yesterday, north of 49,000. A lot of excitement surrounding the Rockies. A one on Gray. Shattered bat that came back at Kershaw. Turner throws out Gray. Well, the handle ends up 12 feet to the right of home plate and the barrel at about 75 feet past Clayton Kershaw. And on the baseball, I mean, this was all in the hands of John on the Subaru Supermo. And Clayton jumping out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like he was doing a back scratcher at Squaw Valley. Is that with skis or a snowboard? Well, not that he would do it, but. That would be with skis. Skis, is that how it was? Is that yeah. back? I yeah, guess yeah. I, I can't do that without hurting my knees. <laughs> Here's Charlie. He tripled his last time up. And he takes ball one. Charlie with that triple has 20 career triples. 14th Rocky to produce 20 triples. Good swing by Blackman. You know who has 20 triples? 
our good friend Vinny Castilla. Good old Vinny. Can still bring it. Brings it every day. Every day. Yeah. Guys love having him around. That pitch Why called the strike, they? and it was off the Subaru strike zone. Brings good energy. It's a good fungo. Still takes good BP. Takes great BP. Has great one-liners. Back up the middle on through. Nice piece of hitting by Blackman. All right, Spilly, Huey. I, I know where you're for, going with for, this. You go first, move now, him. He's tough, though, he's man. He's so hard. And, and I think that's, we, we, we talk about growth in this game and where guys get better. From Clayton Kershaw when he first broke in to where he is now with his pickoff move and holding runners, it's, it's, he's grown so much. So you look at it, it do you go first move and, and just guess? And I, I don't know if I'd want to run into an out right now. Anticipate dirt ball. It's about as good as he can do. If you can see the ball heading towards the dirt, you can take advantage of that and maybe anticipate it and start running. There he went slide step. And even with the lean that he gets going towards home, you still can't pick it up because he can still lean and go to first. It's so good. There was only two stolen base attempts against Kershaw last year. They were attempts. one for two. Yeah, attempts. That's it. There's been 59 stolen bases in his career, 56 caught stealings. As a hitter, when Clayton gets in in the stretch, because of the slide step, and he, he started doing that, I believe, in like 2008, 2009, you didn't want to have somebody on base. It was already hard enough to hit Clayton Kershaw, and with the slide step, it sped up your mechanics at the plate, sped up your timing. Oh, he, he might have got a balk. He balked. That's how you do it. A rare mistake from the veteran. Oh, there it was right there. That's the easiest one you can call. Now you have to take advantage of this opportunity if you can. Two balls and a strike on LeMayhew, a strikeout. And a ground ball to third on one hop. It is something that Kershaw does periodically. He has 18 career balks, which is more than any active pitcher. We found the chink in the armor, guys. He's probably not used to having to go out of the stretch too much. That's that's why. So how do you do that again? <laughs> oh yeah. That's a fair ball. Long throw by Turner. It's high, but he came down on the bag. Did Adrian Gonzalez? And that ends the inning. So Blackman left at second, and we'll go to the sixth. The Rockies won and the Dodgers won.
Nolan Arenado, a home run of the first inning. That held up to the fifth when, with two outs, Andrew Tolles went deep to left center field against John Gray. Gray and Kershaw have been as advertised. As we go to the top of the six, Turner, Gonzalez, Peterson, three, four, and five against John Gray. Turner, ground ball to short, and he struck out on a 96 mile an hour fastball. That's popped up out of play. Healthy hack for Justin Turner, just missing it, clicking it out in front. I'm with you guys. I think if, if John Gray is going to get through this inning, mixing up the sequence now, this third time through for these Dodgers, and more importantly, mixing the sides of the plate that you're going to use with your fastball. That's a strike on the inner half at 96. It's 0-2. And, and that's where they struck him out in his last at bat. Right exactly where that second pitch was on the Subaru strike zone. One and two. Mike Dunn is up in the Rockies bullpen. Well, that's just in case with all the left-handers. You got Gonzalez and Peterson, Grandal, the switch hitter, and then Chase Utley a few doors after that. To third. And there's the big arm from Arenado. One out. But that was all set up before he fielded the baseball because he got behind it, and then as he started to go towards the ball, his footwork was already in position to make that throw. So you can get the big arm behind it, but just watch the chop of the feet now. So right here, he'll start to change direction and go get the baseball. I mean, that's just classic textbook infield play from Nolan. That's why he wears gold. One out, Adrian Gonzalez. Couple of ground balls to the right side. One to LeMahe, one to Reynolds. Strike. Let's see 11th ground ball out tonight for John. The four fly outs. You see the couple to Gerardo, the one over to Cardulo, and then just one strikeout. Yeah, th that's the interesting part. If we told you in the 60 you'd have only one strike, you'd say, well, man, it's probably a tough night. No? No. I like it like this, no, right? I I, and I, what I'm thinking, though, is maybe last year or definitely two years ago, that would have bothered him, not having all the, you know, a ton of strikeouts. But I think that's where the maturity and the, the growth of the bamboo comes into play. Year five. One and two. Adrian Gonzalez sitting on 1,958 career hits. An old Rockies favorite picked up hit number 2,000 today. In his fourth big league uniform, Matt Holliday. Congrats to Big Matt. That is 2,000th knock today for the Yankees. 848 came right here in a Rockies uniform. A large number of hits. Wow. Good for Matty. Absolutely. Here's the 2-2. Matt Holliday is really four home runs away from 300. Think about that group. 2,000 hits, 300 home runs. One of the biggest trades in Rockies history, and as great a player as Matt was, central figure in the run of the World Series in 07. When the Rockies traded Matt Holliday to the A's, this ball pulled, and it's off of Reynolds and into short right field. I imagine that'll be a hit. That was a tough play for Mark. Well, Spilly, you're down there on field level. That ball was hit pretty hard. It was hit hard with top spin. We'll pay attention to it. In between hop, Reynolds is trying to read it. With that top spin off the dirt, ends up hitting the heel of his glove. And the Super Super Mo, you can see. That's a hit to me. Yeah. It's a hit. I mean, that's that's a above average play if he picks that. Ninety-six pitches. Buddy Black comes out. It's officially a base hit. And John Gray. 
will depart after five and a third. And many standing as they should. Terrific performance by John Gray. He departs in a 1-1 game. One of the big stories in the Rockies 4-1 start has clearly been the work of the reconfigured, revamped bullpen. Mike Dunn, Greg Holland, Carlos Estevez, Jake McGee, Adam Adovino, Scott Oberg, they've all shined so far. And they'll be asked tonight to pick up 11 outs, at least, in a 1-1 game. Mike Dunn summoned the earliest he's been called upon in a Rockies uniform. Yeah, he's been in the seventh inning before. He's been in the eighth inning. He's had a few days off after the work of the bullpen from some other guys yesterday. So you have to go back. Mike got the W the last game in Milwaukee. Pitched an inning and a third that game at 25 pitches, as you see on Thursday. Gave up uh, a hit. A walk and also had a strikeout in that game. Jock Peterson is going to be pinch hit for by Scott Van Slyke because he's a career 180 hitter against lefties. Pulled foul. So Van Slyke for Peterson Just to finish that story on the trade. When Matt Holiday went to Oakland, Carlos Gonzalez, Houston Street, Greg Smith came back. Houston Street was your closer and has the highest save percentage in Rockies history, and we know what kind of player Cargo became. One and one. Dunn coming in in this situation, typically it doesn't work for guys, right? The only reason why it works for this Rockies unit is number one, they believe in each other. And number two, you have that open line of communication between Bud and the bullpen guys. I'm almost positive Bud told Mike at some point, these are the guys that you should be ready for whatever the game situation calls for. Yeah, he's a great communicator. So it wasn't a shock, even though it's earlier than he's been called upon. No stone left unturned in preparation for Bud Black. I think the other luxury you have, though, is the performance of Jake McGee from yesterday. So if you go to the eighth inning and you're looking, well, I need a couple guys to, for him to get out from the left side, you've got Jake. So it, it, it really plays well. The other thing, too, is you take Jake or, or Jock Peterson's defense out of center field here. Down the right field line and unplayable 
I mean, Huey, think about it this way. How many times in your career were you surprised when you were on the bench and somebody told you, hey, you're ready? And then how many times did you have the luxury of a manager that said, hey, Huey, oh. if there's a situation like this, be ready? It, it was, it's, a, I've had it both ways where there you, you were just kind of out there on an island and you're hoping and you, you're trying to think along with the manager, but you still get caught by surprise. The other guys that were real good communicators, there was never a moment where he said, whoa, I wasn't quite ready for that role. 3-2, strike three, Van Slyke is gone. Two outs in the sixth. I'm not sure what he's arguing about. There's no doubt the Subaru strike zone where this is. I'll tell you where it is. It's right down Spear Boulevard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you draw a line, it's right across the knees, too, on the Subaru Supermo. Yasmani Grandal, the switch hitting catcher who has walked twice. We call that an exploding fastball. When a fastball like that doesn't have that late downward movement and it feels like it's exploding through the hitting zone. Talking spin rate, four, four seam fastball by Dunn that just can stay on that plane. Talking to Darren Holmes, and he complimented both Mike Dunn and Greg Holland for all of the tutoring they're doing with the young bullpen arms. And just how to prepare, how to, how to be a professional down there. And he said, you know, they're like a lot of bullpens. They have fun. They enjoy each other. But all of a sudden, when the game gets to those middle innings and they can read the complexion and the whole mood changes. It's it's like flipping a switch where it's everything's good. This is playable right side. DJ, DJ coming over if he that's gonna be Reynolds. And a good job once again by Mike Dunn. So John Gray goes five and a third. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's one one Rockies and Dodgers Coors Field on a Saturday night. It is time for our Kubota pitching performance. You knew this was going to be a great matchup, and it lived up to the billing. John Gray, five and a third, allows a run on four hits. And Clayton Kershaw still out there, though this is probably going to be his last inning. He's at 84 pitches. He gave up a home run to Nolan Arenado, who will lead it off here in the sixth. That home run from Nolan came in the first frame. It's 1-1. Andrew Tolles a home run for Los Angeles. Speaking of tolls, he's now in center field for the first time this year. 
The only other guy to play center field other than Jock Peterson was the very versatile Kike Hernandez. So Tolls in center. Van Slyke is now in left. Round three, Arenado against Kershaw. Home run and a ground ball to third. And this ball lobbed into shallow left, and it is going to drop. Lead single for Nolan. And well, a guy who's not as familiar with playing center field of late, especially in the largest expanse of outfield, he was playing exceptionally deep. He had no shot. No, not at all. And this is what I was talking about a moment ago with the, the switch and bringing Van Slyke in. I'm not sure Jock Peterson would have got to this. He plays pretty deep, too, but not as deep as Andrew Tolls. So you hit the 72-mile-an-hour curveball, a little light, a little lob into center field, checks up nicely. Tolls looking behind him to look at the wall and see how far he is. That, thought, that's, that's always a visiting team's problem. It, visiting outfielders always play too deep at Coors Field. So first, Here's Rocky's. story. Trevor doubled to left his last time up. I was going to say it's the first Rockies leadoff man to reach tonight. Run on six hits. Clean defensively for Colorado. A run on just four hits for the Dodgers. They have not made an error. Story works underneath it. Chase Utley call it. April 10th, this is Monday, is Purple Monday. Download the MLB Ballpark app to check in for your chance to win prizes. Purple Monday, April 10th against the Padres. Mark Reynolds to the plate. Mark with a couple home runs already this year. said it a couple innings ago, Spilly, about you know, when Charlie, I actually just last inning when Charlie was at first base, really anticipate sliders and curveballs down in the dirt. It's the only chance you have to take an extra base on Clayton Kershaw. If you're, if you're considering moving up the base through, right. a, through a stolen base. And, and the way you do it, just don't take a very big lead off of first. So you, you're not leaning back that way. So once you see the ball delivered, then you can get your secondary. This ball hit high and deep left center field. Did Reynolds get it? You bet! Two-run bomb! Mark Reynolds! Biggest sign has this been? They can't understate the value of Mark Reynolds. Home run opening day. Home run the other day when the Rockies needed it to right center field. And how big was this one off of Clayton Kershaw? I mean, it had that loud super sound. Probably about as high as it was far. Pretty accurate description. That was a towering home run to left center field. Talk about weight transfer, hands. Well, this is just in harmony. Everything together, and then to click it on the sweet spot. Mark's done a lot of those in his career. What a start for Mark Reynolds. teasing Mark Reynolds earlier today. Relax, it's gonna be exhausting. The type of games that Mark has played for just the first five days of the season. He's carried this team on his back. I have to ask him if he's icing his lower back after every single game. But not only Mark Reynolds, Gerardo Parra tonight with two outstanding defensive plays. This ball's well hit to center field by Parra. Tolls going back. This one's gone. Back to back. 
make it four to one. The two early season offensive heroes for the Rockies, afterthoughts perhaps through much of spring training, Mark Reynolds and Gerardo Parra. We're so happy for these two guys and what they've done. A left on left, doesn't matter to Gerardo. Two for three tonight, including this one. The bits, obviously, then look at him. Yeah. And just when like was that. The, when was the last time Kershaw <laughs> was taken back to back? You know, Dougie's fingers are flying on the computer trying to figure that out. And when was the last time he gave up three big flies in a game? This ball's well hit down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone. Oh. Steven Cardulo trying for the trifecta. Kershaw has allowed 109 home runs in 10 years. That's it. That's it. 19 by the Rockies. That's the team with the highest total against him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was a great tweet. This ball unloaded to the gap in uh, right center, but Puig will cut it off. You see that tweet? That was a good one. The new MPP <laughs> leaders. There it is. <laughs> Mark Reynolds, Gerardo Parra. Updated MPP. I, I like race. that, Andrew. Nicely done. Uh -huh. Nicely well played. played. But you know what? <laughs> Not far from the truth here early in the season. These two guys have exceeded, I don't know if that's the right word, expectations, but just from where they were coming into camp to where they are now with the injuries they've stepped forward big time. Garneau homered yesterday. Hey Spilly I want to get this out because you, you know it'll be twisted somewhat on the East Coast. Well he gave up the three home runs but it was at Coors Field. All three of those jacks were the deepest part of the ballpark. They're out of any stadium that has been designed yet. Give him credit they squared up Clayton Kershaw multiple times. It's not like you the broken bat. Just threw it in the outfield and flew out 420 feet. Based on Clayton Kershaw's reaction, he knows it too. Those were legitimate balls that were squared up. Ball and a strike on Garneau. Two and one on pitch number 98. Grant Dayton, the left-hander, up in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Two and two. Two two to Garneau. And he frees him with a breaking ball. The Rockies in the sixth inning play pepper with the seats. Arenado got it going with a single. Mark Reynolds launches a two run shot and right behind him Gerardo Parra making four to one Rockies.
back. And it's a real happy look back right now. Nolan got it going with a home run to dead center against Kershaw in the first. That held up against John Gray, who pitched a beautiful ball game to the fifth when Andrew Tolles hit one out to left center. But the Rockies with back-to-back -back home runs in the sixth from Reynolds. A two-run shot and then Para to the deepest portion of the ballpark. So as we go to the seventh, the Rockies leading four to one over Kershaw and the Dodgers. Adam Adovino's in the ball game to handle the seventh. It is seven, eight, nine. Yasiel Puig will be first. And the fastball is up and away, ball one. Adams had a few days off since the game he pitched in Milwaukee. He gave up that home run to Kirk Neuenheis. But for Adam, 34 games last year, 27 innings, a whip of .93. Thirty-five strikeouts, twenty-seven walks. It's still the key for Adam. It's not the right-handers. It's just still trying to make sure he locates not only the fastball but the slider to the lefties. And and right now been, he's yeah. having problems with the right-hander. But that's been the issue, and it was the issue in the spring. He had trouble consistently throwing strikes. He's got to regroup here behind Puig, three and zero. Oh. Made an adjustment pretty clearly there. Yeah, he well, he's off the plate. Remember, he did that the other day too. After he walked a couple guys, loaded the bases, and they got a little ticked off. Garneau sets up right in the middle of the plate, and that's fouled back at 94, three and two. And I like that when somebody's struggling, you just set up right in the middle. Set a low tar target, though. Set it down low, and then if it moves one way or the other, you're okay. You still have some wiggle room. You know, after Chase Utley, too, the, the, the on deck or the, the pitcher spot, they don't have any lefties to hit. They just have four right handed hitters on their bench. Center field well hit. That's off the wall, and Puig into second with a double. I think Puig thought this ball was out. Well, he stood there for quite a bit of time. Looked like a cutter or slider off the plate, and new swing for Puig is finishing both hands. He thought for sure he had it. Oh, yeah, he did. That was a, uh, just a spinning slider. And then he realized, wait a second, it might not be out. I got to run. Just goes to show you the three home runs that the Rockies have hit off Clayton Kershaw. Legit. Chase Utley. Ground ball to second and a ground ball to first. Actually, a comebacker. Ball one. So Dougie did exhaustive research. And for Clayton Kershaw, that's the first time in his Hall of Fame career he has allowed back to back home runs. <laughs> Hartley, a strange reaction on the slider, it's a strike. I think he was taking the whole way. But also, he wasn't expecting the slider there. He thought he was taking a fastball. So he started peeking over the edge of the, of the plate and then chased him off, and he had to turn. Talking to Darren Holmes, Adovino's a feel pitcher. It's not so much mechanics, he cross fires, it's complex, but he's just got to get a feel for his release. And his arm slot. Those two things, his release point and his arm slot, he gets that figured out, then the feel will come back.
Two and two. He throws in that big slider here. Utley didn't bite. It's three and two. Don't create traffic. Oh. Well, just in case, Jake McGee's up in the bullpen at the top of the order right around the, the bend with Tolls and Seeger. Logan Forsyth was on deck to pinch hit in the pitcher spot. There are no left handed bats for the Dodgers. Got him strike three big big. Strike out of Utley. No doubt about it in the Subaru strike zone. Can't emphasize that enough. not falling behind Chase Utley. And the guts in the slider. Well, he felt that pitch. He felt the arm slot there. And Garneau stuck it too. And Utley knew it. There was no looking back to Gabe Morales. Billy, I have a trivia question for you as Foresight steps in. Okay. Strike one. All right. It was only the third time in Kershaw's career that he allowed two home runs in the same inning. Yeah. In 2009, it happened against the Rockies. Can you name the two players who hit home runs against him in the same inning? I'm hoping I'm I'm in it. And you're so self-centered. Why would you include yourself? Well, I only had two hits off of them, so one had to be in 2009. You, you know what, Spilly, you you were part of it. Uh, I'm gonna guess Tulowitzki or Ionetta was the second one. So I, it was Barmy. Clint, Clint Barmas. Bar Clint Barmas. Cobra Quick inside. O2. See you later. Oh my goodness. Guess not. One and two. That high. No, it was, no. Strike, it was strike three. So I was right. You were right. Subaru strike zone. That was right at the top of the zone. Make a pitch here. One and two, one out. Puig at second. Four to one, Colorado. He did. Two outs. I thought he had him struck out with a fastball up. A couple pitches prior. Then he goes to the slider, and Forsyth swings over the top of it. Dustin just smothers it, tags him for the second out. That I slider, like I, I was going to say that slider had a lot of downward action. I was curious if that that was a curveball, just based on the way that the ball went straight down. I know Otto likes to give a sweeping slider. He likes to give the hard slider. But that did have the tumbling action more of a curveball. Yeah, I mean, you were describing it accurately, Spilly. He's said on many occasions he really has three different sliders. 
That thing fell off the table. That curveball type action. Andrew Tolles. Where's that? That looked like it got the outside corner. One and oh. And you know what Bud's doing here. He's saying, Otto, you get this guy here, because I got the pitcher spot that's due up at the next or the bottom half of this inning to lead off. That way I can pinch it. I can use Jake McGee in the eighth inning to get through some of the left handers. I know that's what he's thinking right here. This is the big at bat. Yeah, because, right. Because then you give McGee, Seeger, Turner obviously is a righty, and Gonzalez. And you give him to come in to start the inning. Instead of saying, well, you might have to come in and get four outs. But then you would have to do a double switch. So that's why this is the at bat. Tolls a home run to left center field against John Gray in the fifth with two outs. The only run allowed by Gray. John pitched very, very well. Five and a third, a run on four hits. He walked three, struck out one, 96 pitches. Pitcher of record on the plus side is Mike Dunn, who got the final two outs in the sixth. Runner going, and he got Puig dead to rights. And that works Thank out you even better. better. Absolutely. Now there's two lefties leading off next inning. Where on earth was Puig going? I don't know, but you say thank you very much for running into this out. Down by three runs. That's an easy throw for Garneau. Easy apply and tag by Nolan. Rockies up four to one as we head to the seventh. Four to one as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Huge crowd at Coors Field on DJ LeMahieu bobblehead night. Doesn't bobble much there. <laughs> Good camera work from Bo. Yeah, Grant Dayton is now in. He was in the ball game yesterday. What what on earth? Help me out. You're down I, three I, runs. I, I have no answer for you. I Queen mean, takes off for third. Not only that, but it's to the open side. That was the uh, easiest caught stealing Dustin Garneau is going to have all year. And to your point, which you mentioned earlier, too, it plays right into Bud's hand. Puig, not my friend right now. No, because he can bring in the lefty to start off with tolls next day. So you got three out of the first four hitters are left-handed for Jake McGee. Thank you. It works on so many levels. As a hitter, you always ask the base runner not to run when you're hitting, especially when you start getting the two strikes. I'm what? trying to hit with runners and no, score. But Spilly, there's, nev there's no reason to run here. Exactly. I, I'm just adding fuel. <laughs> it's You also play to the score. Christian Adamas. 
for the one and I, one I, count. He's just say hit. thank you. I exactly. mean, it's one that, of those things. That's like, your bottom right. line. Cool, thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we don't get it, but that's great. Yeah. Final line on Clayton Kershaw. He goes six innings, allows four runs, all of them earned on eight hits. Naturally did not walk a batter. He struck out six, 99 pitches, and he gave up three home runs. Give a lot of credit to kid at the plate, Christian Adamas, who can play a lot of spots. Out of options, he came out and had a great spring. And earned a spot on this roster, and this will be caught by Utley at second. Now the top of the order, Charlie Blackman has a couple hits tonight, two of the eight against Kershaw, triple in the third. And a single to center in the fifth. with Grant Dayton the last two days, just his ability to pitch both to righties and lefties, mixing in multiple pitches. His numbers suggest that last year, 26 and a third, 39 strikeouts, a .76 whip. He's nasty. Ball one on Blackman. Fly ball to center field, playable for Tolls. Charlie just missed it. Uh, with two outs, you know, Jake's out there. I'll tell you right now, you gear up for the 2017 season at your local Rockies dugout store, the place for all things Rockies. Jake McGee's had plenty of time to get loose. Ponder what's going to happen in the top of the eighth inning. LeMayhew 0 for 3, strikeout, and two ground balls to third. That's how you know DJ's off a little bit. He's pulled the ball twice. Now he'll pull it every once in a while. But when he does, it's usually base hits. Yeah. And off off speed pitches. He's yeah. pulling fastballs. This is not his his style. And DJ is going to fly out to Puig in right field. And that will end the frame. So we move on to the eighth inning. Jake McGee will be aboard. The Rockies have a four to one lead on Los Angeles.
Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Say yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo customers get your two-for-one Rockies club-level tickets by visiting wellsfargo.com backslash Rockies. Rockies up four to one. Jake McGee who got the save last night. And it was the Jake McGee with the solid legs underneath him. Something he battled last year. He had knee issues. He was 96 to 98 last night. He struck out the side to end the game. Utley, Grandal, and Seeger. And it only took him 14 pitches to do all of that. 10 strikes for Jake McGee. And you can just tell the difference between last year and this year, not only in the velocity, but the angle of the baseball coming out of his hand. A lot of downward action this year instead of more flat like it was last year. Got a pinch hitter for Tolls now, Gutierrez. Excuse me, Gutierrez Franklin. Fouled off, 0 and 2. Franklin spent eight years, or parts of eight years, with Seattle. Most known as a good outfielder and a guy that was productive against left-handed pitching. That's got to go foul, and it will. I look at him, you know, Spilly, we, we tell, we say some guys are a fourth outfielder. Gutierrez, to me, with Seattle, was, was a, a third and a half outfielder. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it makes perfect sense. Gutierrez was, for a time being, was one of the best center fielders defensively in the game and was rewarded. Seattle Mariners gave him a pretty good contract and started to really fight some injuries. And, and you can look through his injury history. He was plagued between 2011 through really 2014, then saw a resurgence with Seattle and started hitting the long ball. 15 homers in, four, in 2015 and 14 homers last year. Gutierrez, Seeger, and Turner. to deep right and it's over the head of Cardulo. So a leadoff double for Gutierrez. Four seam fastball from Jake. Doesn't get it down. Thigh high and Franklin one hops the wall in right field. Corey Seeger 0 for 3 tonight. Jake struck out Corey to end the ball game yesterday on a fastball looking away. That's low. Two and up.
2 1 to Nolan. Trevor Story. Replace Nolan at third base. What a smart thing Nolan did, too, knowing that. You know, Seager's getting out of the box on the left side. You got the runner at second base, but where he caught it really didn't worry about taking a peek at Franklin at second. Don't worry about it. Get the out. Get out. Get out. And so Nolan does that, knowing that Trevor's going to replace him over at third. So Nolan doesn't even worry about the runner at second. He's just looking at that first baseman. He's looking at Mark, saying, I want to make sure I make a strong throw to him. We'll get that runner, and then whatever happens after that. But because Trevor replaced him, he didn't even go over there. Turner pushed off the plate on that fastball in, 1-0. and out. Turner, a ground ball to short, a strikeout swinging. And a ground ball to third, all against John Gray. High fly ball to Cardulo. Two gone, it'll bring up Adrian Gonzalez. Just kind of breathe a sigh of relief when you get Justin Turner out. In his career, he's hitting 382 against the Rocks. Tonight, 0 for 4. Strike one. Oh, one. That looked pretty good. One and one. It's been a tight strike zone both ways. Did he offer? Yes, he did. Adrian Johnson, who had a bigger strike zone last night, says he went around. One and two. Huge crowd. I haven't gotten the official number yet. Many are standing. Actually just got it. It's another sellout. 48,012. One and two on Gonzalez. Back up the middle of base hit and it's four to two. Adrian Gonzalez, career RBI number 133 in 108 games against Colorado. What a bad pitch from Jake McGee. Second RBI on the season for Adrian Gonzalez, who's one of the great RBI men, not just against the Rockies, but in baseball. He's been above 90 every year since 2007. Be careful here with Van Slyke. Moves into fourth place all time against Colorado with the hunt goes 133. Bonds of the leader at 141. One of the things you're seeing that in this year's vintage of Jake McGee you're not really seeing the slider and play last year when he didn't have the fastball because of the knee issue you saw him trying to you know invent ways to get guys out and you saw him throwing the slider more which he rarely did in Tampa 
That's a great pitch, well located. And it's not just the velocity being back up. It's not just that it's 96 to 98 again. It's the fact that he can repeat and hit spots. And throw down in the zone. Because he has something to drive off of. He has his legs underneath him. So he has the confidence that he can make that pitch. Right he there. got him, strike three. Van Slyke caught looking. The Dodgers do get a run. Gutierrez elite double brought home by Gonzalez, but it's four to two. Rockies going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Dustin Garneau chatting in the Rockies dugout in the bottom of the eighth inning the Rockies will see Chris Hatcher and a reminder who wants tacos fans follow at root sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies eclipse the seven run mark Drew Goodman Jeff Houston Ryan Spielberg's Mark Stout Rockies have hit three home runs tonight all against Clayton Kershaw they did something that has never happened to Kershaw in his tremendous career. He gave up back to back home runs. It you. was Mark Reynolds in the sixth, the two run shot, immediately followed by Gerardo Parra hitting a home run. He has 267 major league starts, 268 games for Clayton Kershaw, and that's never happened before. And you know, coming into tonight's game, he had almost 500 fewer hits than innings pitched in his career which is just absurd. Here's Nolan. He hit a home run in the first against Kershaw. He is two for three. There's strike one from the hard throw and Hatcher. And this really set the tone tonight. He hit that curveball out to center field. Put the Rockies ahead, one nothing. Gave him that good feeling to start this game against Kershaw. Ball and a strike. Greg Holland starting to do his thing in the Rockies pen. Two and one. It's Chris Hatcher's third year with the Dodgers, seventh major league season. And this ball lined to center. Scott Van Slyke's now in center field. And Franklin Gutierrez is in left. So three different center fielders tonight for Dave Roberts and the Dodgers. Andrew Tolles was the last center fielder. Jock Peterson started there. Those two guys were pinch hit for. 
One out, Trevor Story. He had a double in the fourth, one for three. The Rockies, with the exception, obviously, Reynolds and Parr and Nolan, have somewhat struggled out of the gate offensively, especially at the top of the lineup. And tonight, against the best pitcher on the planet, I thought there were more high quality at bats up and down the lineup than maybe well, in, in any game this week. Uh, agreed, because the nature of Clayton Kershaw forces you to really zone in and, and think about each of you. I mean, you're totally invested, not to say you weren't in the other games, but you have to be locked in against Clayton or he'll make you look silly. And tonight, they were. Even pitches, some of the pitches they took or fouled off. You could just see that. The guys talking about their swings. Were just a lot of high quality at bats and good results. And I'm not just talking about the home runs. There were a lot of balls that were barreled. The double by Story against Kershaw was barreled. How about Gerardo Parra's his line drive back up the middle? And Charlie had a, the triple to right field, any, the line, any, drill, any, the line any, drive up the middle. Yeah, Charlie Blackman swung the bat well. There's a lot of good signs. Spilly, you concur from your vantage point? I just like the at-bats throughout the lineup. I mean, you're right. You guys are looking at guys from, from the very top, from Charlie Blackman all the way down. Even, even when you look at Garneau and John Gray, these are long at-bats that they were taking against Clayton Kershaw. Cardulo, Cardulo had a couple of good A-Bs. I think when you're watching this team, obviously it's been known for its lineup. And you look at the type of players, Charlie and DJ, the batting title winner last year. But they haven't been hitting quite yet. Here's the nice silver lining. They still keep winning. And, and that's the important part of this. Story gone, two outs. That'll bring up Mark Reynolds. He get a nice round of applause from this sellout crowd. Back in the sixth inning, that was the first one, but that was the important one. Put you up three to one. 420 something feet out there. And then Gerardo backed it right up. I'll tell you what, Mark Reynolds is going to be a pretty strong candidate for National League Player of the Week. Three home runs the opening week. The Rockies as a club off to a fine start. Nice In the ninth inning, by the way, Greg Holland will see Osmani Grandal, Yasiel Puig, and Chase Utley. But for Mark hitting 381, three home runs, eight RBIs. One and two on Reynolds. To third, tough hop, and that's going to sneak through. That'll be a base hit for Reynolds. Well, Mark hits this one with some heavy, heavy top spin, and then Justin Turner tries to drop step, and it will be a base hit, and rightfully so. Because that was the only option that Justin had. If he tries to go get it, the ball just eat him up. So he tried to drop step, got by him, and then snuck by Corey Seager. And another hit for, for Mark. Now he's hitting 409. And you have Gerardo Parr is hitting 421. <laughs> I mean, these two guys in the first five games. But that's team, man, right? It's not, it, it can't always be 
the highest paid exactly. guy. The guy that hits third and fourth. But not only that, Drew, these guys are doing it on both sides of the ball. They, they played flawless well, hey, defense. I mean, just think about Gerardo, a couple of his catches today. He had the one over his head, he made the snag, but the key was when uh, Puig lined out with a couple runners on in the fourth. Seagirl touched the bag. We'll go to the ninth inning. Rockies looking for three more outs. They're up four to two. They'll turn it over to Greg Holland. Looking to close this thing out for Colorado. Jenny Kavanaugh, Corey Sullivan with you. We're getting ready for the Toyota post game show immediately following baseball. I can't believe Clayton Kershaw did something he's never done tonight. We said it in the pregame he was going to do that, right? Yeah. Give up back to back jacks. Back to back jacks. That was all, and it's 14, 15, and 16 that he's given up here at Coors Field. Seeing those power bats for sure. The Rockies came out. All the runs scored via the home run. So we'll break down the offense and, of course, John Gray's performance as well. That's coming up next, guys. We'll turn it back over for the ninth. All right, we will look forward to that. Greg Holland naturally will handle the ninth. He's three for three and save opportunities. The former All-Star with the Kansas City Royals. And Yasmani Grandal will be his first subject. Not much history between the three guys that are going to face Greg. Grandal 0 for 1. Puig he's never faced before. And then Chase Utley 0 for 1. So here we go. Holland's first pitch, strike one. He's been consistent with the fastball, 93, 94, 95 miles an hour. That hasn't wavered. Now he comes with the slider. One ball, one strike. Holland has faced the minimum in three games. He's faced only nine hitters. One and two. Four strikeouts in the three innings. Just one walk. Not allowed to hit. And that walk was erased on a double play. One and two. Swung on and missed one out in the ninth. Even after this pitch, Greg stumbles. 
ever so slightly, but he still delivers the fastball right where Dustin wanted, maybe a little bit more inside. But the, the slip at the end from Greg lands on the ball and then whoopsie daisy hangs on. Yasiel Puig doubled his last time up. And that was a changeup going one. That's kind of what makes Greg unique. He's got the fastball slider and changeup. Three first closers are closer. unusual, huh? Well, and somebody that throws, you know, low to mid 90s with the fastball. Sometimes a three mix closer, I think, at Houston Street, but he wasn't throwing that hard. Nope. Oh, one, he went, didn't he? Oh, come on, Gary. Ball and a strike. <laughs> I think we. <laughs> I think Buddy thought he's walked. I think we understand what Buddy thought it was. He said if he would have hit, it would have been a double. You can tell He's Greg like, Holland as a, as a hitter if you're getting defensive swings from the very beginning. Oh, oh, defensive swing, check swing. Showing me that there's deception behind Holland's mechanics and that it's very difficult to pick up the baseball and the spin. Here's the one, two. Even though it looked like it was a good swing, that ball, if we zero in on the bat, is probably somewhere around the label. Let's Check hope. and see exactly where the swing is. Yeah, right exactly around right. the label. Good call, Spilly. Yeah, you were all over that. Garneau sets up away, one, two. You tease him with the slider. Started looking like a fastball on the outer third, and then take it off the plate. He's got him. Two outs. Time to stand at Coors Field. You can do it in your living room if you want. Two outs in the ninth, and it was the slider. To Puig. Big cut, no baseball. Two down. Two outs, Chase Utley at the plate for Los Angeles. As Spilly said to start this broadcast, you have a chance now to finish this off and make a statement. Well, that was in the Subaru strike zone, but it was called ball one. Utley tonight, 0 for 3. Two ground outs and a strikeout. <laughs> getting tight. I think Chase also has just taken a pitch. Balls and a strike on Utley. Yeah. 
Ground ball to second. DJ's got it. And the Rockies have defeated the Dodgers in back-to-back -back ball games. Two to one last night, four to two this evening in front of another sellout. First time the Rockies have began a season with two sellouts since 1998. Mike Dunn gets the win. He's 2-0. Clayton Kershaw, first time the Rockies have beaten him since July of 2013. Holland is 4-for-4 four four in save opportunities. And for just the third time in Rockies history, they have begun a season 5-1. and one. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. It was a night of long ball, something you don't expect against Clayton Kershaw. Curveball in the first with two outs. Nolan hit one to dead center. And then in a 1-1 game with a man aboard, close to dead center field, Mark Reynolds hit a towering home run. And then right behind him, Gerardo Parra, also to dead center. And the Rockies led it 4-1. They would win it. Four to two, great work again by the bullpen. Three and two thirds, a run on three hits, six strikeouts, no walks. Their season ERA at 171 with 30 strikeouts, and just 21 innings. Everybody involved, the Rockies are five and one, and a chance to sweep the Dodgers comes tomorrow. Four to the final. Again, plenty of work to do for Jenny Kavnar and Corey Sullivan. Guys, it's all yours. All right, Drew, thanks so much. Back-to-back -back sellouts, back-to-back -back jacks by the Rockies.